Hey, I'm Jason Creel, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing to my lawns for Bermuda grass, zoysia grass, centipede grass, and St. Augustine grass in the summer. Let's get started. Today's video is sponsored by my friends at Yardbook. If you're looking for a lawn care software, I would encourage you to go to yardbook.com and sign up for a free account. I've been using Yardbook for over seven years. All right, here's a picture of my front yard, and it's starting to, to look pretty decent. This was a complete transformation project that's taking us a few years, but it, it's starting to fill in. Uh, for the most part and this is Bermuda grass and Bermuda and zoysia centipede are warm season grasses they, they typically going to thrive in hot weather if you have enough water and nutrients and things like that now, now this video uh, may be educational for those with cool season grasses but some of the tips and, and practical suggestions I'm giving you are not going to be uh, applied to your grass types because obviously uh, think about it, the, the way the grasses grow. So typically our cool season grasses are going to thrive in the spring and, and in the fall and they're going to struggle a little bit when it gets hot in the summer. Uh, I'm in Alabama so our cool season grasses are, would really struggle if they uh, survive at all. But our warm season grasses, you know, they, they go dormant in the winter and then in spring they're just now starting to get going a little bit. But when it gets hot, that's when they start to really take off. This Bermuda grass, uh, 95 degrees is no problem for Bermuda as long as it has um, water. So anyway, let's uh, walk around. I'm going to show you the grass types and I'm going to show you the fertilizer I'm using. Talk to you about some of the weed problems that we're dealing with this summer and the products we're using for that. So let's get started. I'm going to walk and talk at the same time. And yes, I'm just barely coordinated enough to do that. And you can see one thing I want to show you in this lawn. I'm not 100% sure. This might be something you start to deal with in the summer. Some of these little brown patches here. And I believe that is a dollar spot. And we've had a good bit of rain. If you're watering your grass regularly and particularly watering it at night, then you might uh, start to see some dollar spot in the yard. Now, the fungicides may give you a little bit of control in the dollar spot. Um, but oftentimes it'll grow out of it with nitrogen and it'll as you mow the grass a few times But if you are watered at night, I would encourage you to change your water habit to start watering early in the morning And if you're if you're starting to see dollar spot, you may cut back on your water So you maybe go just to one deep watering once a week, maybe 30 minutes per zone if you have irrigation what I've been doing particularly on my Bermuda and zoysia lawns is I typically go in in the spring with a fertilizer as they're starting to turn green to try to give them an early green up also going to cut them short in the spring to try to let the sunlight get down there and warm the roots and get them get the lawns turning green okay but that might be a, a quick release fertilizer to give a little bit of nitrogen um, or uh, this year I switched up and I started putting out a slow release fertilizer but it it's it's basically to start feeding the lawn as it's coming out of doors you're starting to transition if you do a quick release fertilizer too early when it's not very green then you're oftentimes going to waste it and then what I typically do as we get closer to summer that's when I'll come in with a, a slow release fertilizer that I'm looking for that to carry me through the rest of the growing season so I'm wanted to, to stay green at least on into September now it may not be as green in September as is on the 4th of July but hopefully it's going to be uh, have some green color hold holding at that time but September oftentimes many people are not looking for their yard to be as green and it might be getting tired of mowing at that time also so let me show you the fertilizer I'm using on my Bermuda and zoysia lawns and then we'll get over there and talk about uh, centipede and St. Augustine and then we'll show you some weed difficulties you may deal with in the summer Okay, so you can see here, this is what I'm putting out on my Bermuda yards. This is a 3807, so it's 38% nitrogen in this bag. Now, if you divide that number, it's a 50 pound bag. If you divide that first number, which is your nitrogen, 38% nitrogen, divided by two, it's gonna tell me there's 19 pounds of nitrogen in that 50 pound bag. Now you gotta decide how much nitrogen you wanna put on your yard. Because I've already put out a fertilizer in the spring, a slow release that's still feeding the grass, it allowed me to go with a lesser rate um, now in the summer because again, I'm still benefiting from my spring application. Now, if your spring application's already come and gone and not benefiting the lawn anymore, you may need to put a higher rate of this fertilizer out to carry you through the rest of the summer. Now, I'm not saying this is the only fertilizer you can use or you have to go get this exact composition. I'm just showing you what I do to give you an idea of what you can do for your lawn. Now, Bermuda grass can tolerate a lot of nitrogen, but I'm putting a total of about three pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet on the calendar year. Some in the spring and then come back 
uh, this time of year. Now, if you don't mind mowing more often and you want to have it really, really green, you can go more than that. But again, if you do that in a quick release fertilizer form, uh, you can risk burning the lawn. You also are going to probably waste a lot of the nutrients. It's like the, uh, the illustration of drinking out of a fire hydrant. The grass can only use so much nitrogen at one time. That's one thing that's great about the slow release fertilizer. It's able to feed the lawn at a rate in which the grass can actually use the nutrients that are available. Of course, it's good to remember that if your pH is too low and your soil is too acidic, it may the grass may not be able to use the nutrients that you're providing for in the form of fertilizer. So you may uh, want to do a soil test, check your pH, or as we do, we add lime uh, to our program each and every year to try to maintain the pH because I live in an area where the soil is naturally more acidic. Now for my zoysia lawns, I'm doing a very similar thing. I'll put the same exact fertilizer out in the spring that I do on the Bermuda yards. When I get to May or June, I put a fertilizer out that has an insecticide attached to it. Now the word that I learned, our friend James taught me, is called sparged. So it has a, a, an insecticide sparged to the fertilizer, it means attached. So it's, as you're spreading the fertilizer, you're spreading the insecticide as well. And I'm using, uh, it's Merit is the, is the label name. And so the Merit is attached to the fertilizer. It's a 38-0-6 blend. As I put it out, I'm not only fertilizing the lawn, I'm also controlling the grubs. So that's my target pest in that situation. May and June are oftentimes a good time to go after the grubs because they're still in a small stage and, and you're easier to control at that point in time. Now, if the grubs are not controlled, your lawn may have some grubs and, and it can tolerate some grubs. But if you get uh, too many grubs, particularly in a zoysia lawn and gets damaged, then it's gonna be, uh, it may result in going into the winter with a weak root system and could result in some winter kill. And as many of you know, a zoysia lawn is not very quick to recover from damage. So that's why we're trying to prevent that from happening on our zoysia lawns. Now here's some zoysia grass that I have put uh, underneath these crape myrtle trees. Now this is a Zorro zoysia. It's one of the more shade tolerant varieties. They probably could use a little more sunlight. And as these tall crape myrtles get weighted down with blooms and it rains on them, sometimes I can trim, trim them up a little bit to let them a little more sunshine get in here. But even with the current uh, light condition, I know that's very shady. And this zoysia typically looks beautiful, especially early in the year as the leaves fell out. Sometimes it, it gets a little, uh, the grass thins out as well. But it's a great grass and you can see right here what this zoysia looks like. It's, it's really a uh, fine blade, grows thick and it tolerates some level of shade uh, for our warm season grasses. The Zorro zoysia is gonna look uh, very similar to an emerald zoysia. Typically on your zoysia grasses, the, the ones with the finer, thinner leaf blade are gonna do better in the shade than one with the wider blade like the Z52, which is common in my area. My yard has been a project, and I wanna show you a little bit of St. Augustine grass. We plugged this maybe two years ago. I don't know, maybe it was a year ago. I, I lose track of time sometimes. Sometimes people ask me on the channel, they saw me plugging the St. Augustine, and they say, Jason, what's your St. Augustine grass look like? Well, here it is, it's spreading. I just threw out a few uh, random pieces of St. Augustine back here, and you can see it, it's really doing well. I think it has good color, and this is what I'm hoping uh, this area will continue to fill in and look nice. Now I did plant some trees back here. I've got a bald cypress tree I'm pretty excited about. I've got some green giant arborvitas and things like that. Just give you a taste of how fast our, our warm season grasses grow. This is some Bermuda grass. This was all trees a few years ago when we bought the property and threw some pieces of sod out and look how it spread. This is my mini driving range slash soccer field slash football field slash whatever else uh, you want to do out here. It's about two acres that I've got cleared off in just a flat level place, kind of a play area. All right, for the centipede and St. Augustine lawns, what I'm doing is I'm using this 1819 blend from Harrell's. And so this is 18% nitrogen versus the other fertilizer I showed you, which is a 38% nitrogen. So this is gonna have less than half the nitrogen. Generally speaking, I'm not gonna put as much nitrogen on my centipede and St. Augustine lawns. So I'm gonna put this out and, uh, twice. This is a, has some slow release fertilizer in it. So this fertilizer blend lasts about eight weeks. So I'm gonna put it out in May and come back again in July and put it out a second time. And that's gonna make my centipede and St. Augustine lawns look nice. I've been very happy with the results I'm getting by doing this program. Now I'm going for about 0.85 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet 
uh, for each application. So putting me at around 1.7 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet for the calendar year. Now my understanding is on a centipede line, I'm not 100% sure on the St. Augustine, the general rule of thumb is you don't want to go over two pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet for the calendar year. So I'm staying under that and I like the results I'm getting. And oftentimes your centipede's not going to get the deep dark green that a Bermuda or Zoysia would. But I want it to be nice and healthy and oftentimes by the summer if I'm mowing my centipede regular and I often try to mow it low like an inch and a half. Um, then I'm getting good results. The weeds that were a problem in the spring typically have gone away by now. And there's not even a lot of times a lot of weed pressure on a centipede lawn. So it should be looking pretty good by the summertime. Now the St. Augustine lawns, I'm going to mow those much higher, up three and a half, four inches. And the St. Augustine lawns seem to do better when cut taller like that. But let's talk about some of the weed pressure that you may face in the summer and what I'm, products I'm using to deal with those weeds. You see here, I still got a few bare spots I'm trying to fill in. But one thing is, I, I typically don't blanket my yards after uh, once I enter the summer periods. There's a couple reasons for that. One, the weather's typically really hot. Uh, and then two, hopefully you don't need to at that point. Hopefully the yards are pretty much cleaned up. Now if I've got a yard full of crabgrass in the summer, I'm pretty much just going to not worry about that in my area. I'm just said, uh, you know what, we're going to let that crabgrass run its course this year. Next year I'm going to put a pre-emergent out in January or February and we're going to try to get ahead of that crabgrass and get under control. It's very difficult to control in the middle of the summer. What about other like broadleaf weeds and things like that? So what I'll do is I'm fertilizing with a ride on spreader sprayer. I may uh, be fertilizing this lawn. As I ride, I'm watching to see what weeds I see. And the common ones I keep running into are things like spurge, things like yellow wood sorrel. And hopefully it's not a terrible breakout, but let me show you the spurge and something you may see in your lawn this summer. There's spurge, and you can see it'll really be a lot of it sometimes in the yard. You might find the crack of a sidewalk. But what I like to do, I keep in my spreader sprayer a very low rate of change up and a very low rate of metsulfuron, which comes under the product name Manor. I put just 12 ounces of change up and then a quarter ounce of Manor per acre. Now you might need to know how to calibrate your sprayer. You can search for Lawn Care Life calibration after you watch this video and there's a calibration video that can go over in detail how to calibrate your sprayer. But those low rates, 12 ounces per acre of change up, a quarter ounce per acre of metsulfuron, it'll clean up weeds like spurge. The good thing about that combination is I can use it on my Bermuda, Zoysia, Centipede, and St. Augustine lawns. Now, if the lawns are drought stressed, I'm gonna be hesitant to go out there and spray, blanket spray a lawn. Uh, again, hopefully I'm not blanket spraying anyway. Hopefully it's not needed to at this time. But if it's 95 degrees, then I'm gonna be extra careful to do that. Personally, I feel more comfortable spraying the Bermuda lawns. I felt like um, they're able to tolerate it better. And if by chance you did get a little discoloration, it's typically gonna recover quick, fairly quickly. Now other weeds you might see is stuff like this. You got Kalinga in the yard. Now Kalinga uh, is tough. I use a, a combination for spot treating weeds. Oftentimes, instead of uh, having to spray it with my right on spreader sprayer, I may just see a little bit of weeds in the yard. So I may see maybe a little spurge, maybe a little Kalinga, maybe a little nut sedge. So one combination I use all the time is Celsius and Certainty. I'll mix those two together. And again, that combination can be used on Bermuda, Zoysia, Centipede, and St. Augustine lawns that have very good results controlling many weeds with that combination, including Kalinga. You can also use Dismiss products on Kalinga, like, uh, like Blindside, like Dismiss NXT. This, the active ingredient in Dismiss is Sulfetrazone. It'll give you a lot of burn down action on your Kalinga. So if I have a yard that's totally covered in Kalinga, at that point I may have to put Dismiss a regular dismiss at like eight ounces per acre in my ride on sprayer and spray it like that. There's other products that work for Kalinga. I've been using this year, I put out uh, Spectacle Flow in May to try to help control some of the, uh, the Kalinga and I'm real happy with the early results I'm seeing. Now you might see some nut sedge in the lawn like this. So you might go with a product like um, Certainty mentioned it earlier, it will have a good effect on the Kalinga as well as nut sedge. But other products like Pro Sedge and Sedge Hammer are gonna do better, in my opinion, on nut sedge, but not as good on Kalinga, which is a type of sedge, it's just not nut sedge. Now you might have a little bit of crabgrass like this. Now if you wanna spray that with the Celsius Certainty combination, it works great. You also use a product like that has Quinclorac in it, like Solitaire, like uh, Drive Accelerate, something like that. And I can put some links in the description to some of these products. 
Um, but again, if I've got a yard that's covered in crabgrass, I'm not worried about trying to fix it. Most of the time you end up turning it yellow. It's very hard to control it. Um, but if you want to just get rid of a little bit, you can spot treat with those products I mentioned. All right, hopefully you guys learned something about the weed control for your lawn. If you're watering, again, maybe just go one deep watering per week and really soak it early in the morning so you don't uh, deal with fungus. The other thing we didn't really talk about a lot was the insects. We did talk about grubs, but you may uh, sometimes end up with chinch bugs and things like that. Chinch bugs, the way you spot those, my understanding. And I don't have a lot of experience with this, but oftentimes if you have a spot that looks really dry in your lawn, but you know it's had plenty of water, then you may want to get down there and see if you can find some chinch bugs. My friend James that teaches me about a lot of this stuff. Uh, the first time I saw that, he said, check for chinch bugs. And I got down there, and sure enough, I found one right away. And they're tiny. And he said, that's, that's really uh, rare sometimes to be able to see them because they're so little. But I went down and showed him, took a picture. and said, is this a chinch bug? He said, yeah. So they're, they're a little, a little bitty. Uh, insect, but they can cause some damage to your lawn. Centipede lawns can get spittle bugs in the summer. They actually can cause quite a bit of damage. So you may have to use like a bifenthrin product or something to try to control spittle bugs and chinch bugs and things of that nature. Of course, last year we got totally hammered by army worms in our area. Hopefully uh, those two will come later in the summer. Or hopefully this year won't be nearly as bad. So don't get out there and just blanket your yard for no reason. Hopefully your yards are looking pretty clean and you can walk around and spot treat your weeds. You can use the, the change up. You can put a sedge product in there with change up and pro sedge and that'll get a lot of things. You might also sow other weeds you might be dealing with like Lespedeza, Virginia buttonweed, chamber bitter, things like that. Um, but the Celsius Certainty Combo is also great. And if you want to simplify things, you can spot treat most any weed you're going to see in your warm season lawn uh, with those two products. Get your fertilizer right. Get your watering right. Mow it regularly. If you want to keep it low, you're going to have to mow it fairly frequently, especially if it's a Bermuda lawn that's had a lot of fertilizer. I had to mow mine about every four or five days. Or you use a growth regulator, which is what I've done on my yard, and that makes a huge difference. You guys are great. Appreciate you watching the video. I just hit 100,000 subscribers on the channel, so I appreciate all the support. If you're not one of those 100,000, why don't you join the party and hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell. If you're in the lawn care business, you might want to go over to lawncarelife.com. I've got a lot of resources there. Some people want to get into weed control and fertilization. I have a weed control and fertilization academy i've got letters programs pricing charts i got stuff for mowing i got stuff for mosquito spraying it's all at lawncarelife.com or check out these videos that are popping up on your screen now we'll see you next time